All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell Inspiron 1 2330. All right, so first thing we got to do is remove this piece. There are some little holes here that you basically get in there and just pull this up. So as you can see, this pops, this cover. Um, and once you pull that up, you go around the side edges. Sorry, you know, it's not focusing. There you go. Let's see. So you go around the side edges and you pop it up there. Okay, so it might be a little tricky, but get that up. Then work your way up the sides. Okay, just like that and around the edge. Then after you get all of it popped out, you can slide this out that way. Okay, underneath you have four screws uh, holding in this. Uh, we're gonna be using a PH2 screwdriver and we're gonna remove those four screws. Okay. So let's go ahead and remove those. One, two. And the last one, four. All right. Once you remove those four screws, you can lift this up and then slide it back. You can see it has this little tab that goes into this piece. Okay. Once we do that, we got to remove screws from the bottom. Let me move this over. In the way. Okay, so we're going to lift this up here, and you can see there's four screws on the bottom. All right, so we're going to undo those screws. So let's go ahead and get that out. Okay, one, two, oops. And also keep the screws in order. I put them on my work desk, or I guess in this case on the floor, in the pattern I remove them. So the back screws I put in that square pattern, and then these ones I put in this line. And that's how I keep them organized, so I get the same screws back where I took them from. Okay. Alright, so we got those four screws out. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta pop this thing out. It's gonna be a little difficult. Um, there's actually a gap here, so we're gonna kinda pull on there. Okay. So what I do is I use my fingernails to pull up and I push with my thumbs on the other side. Okay, just like this. You can use pry tools or other tools, but I find this works best. All right, so I can hear it all popping. All right, and then it helps, you can kind of use this silver side to help pull it, to separate it. Let me see if I can show that. So I'm gonna pull this up. Okay, you can see it pops out. And then I'll kind of grab here to help pull it. Okay, you can see it's separating. If you can get something in there to help keep it separated, that will work really well. So kind of get your finger in there or some kind of tools. All right, and then we're gonna continue going around the frame, pulling this out. Okay, it's gonna be tough, but okay. It's hard to record this as well because I have to make sure everything is in frame. Okay, so continue pulling. All right, and pushing, and I'm gonna now just push my thumbs in there and pull, and you can see this is now coming out. Okay, so you can actually see where the four screws mount on this. They have the little screw mount things there, and this comes off, okay? Pretty simple, all right? Just takes a little bit of elbow grease, and here you can see inside what the entire device looks like. All right, maybe let me get a thumbnail here okay oh that's kind of too much all right so we'll get a thumbnail here okay so we're going to be upgrading the ram and the hard drive so we're putting actually brand new uh ram and hard drive and reinstalling windows on there so they're hidden underneath these pieces um, since we're going to be changing the RAM, the RAM is underneath this door. Um, you can take this whole metal panel off, but uh, if you're just doing the RAM, you just need to open that panel. Um, let me zoom in a bit for you guys. Okay. And then the RAM, you just pull these two tabs to the side, just like this. Then it pops up, and then you can go ahead and pull this out. As you can see, this is PC3L 12800S, 4 gigs. Uh, the customer wanted to upgrade to 16 gigs, I believe. 
yeah so we got two 8 gig sticks all right this is ddr3l 1600 all right okay so what we're gonna do we gotta take this stuff out and we're just gonna upgrade it okay this packaging has this all right you don't have to buy this exact brand um uh, the speed does, you do want to try and match it with the original one. Sometimes it supports higher speeds, but it might not work. So keep that in mind. Um, and if your computer doesn't start up with the new RAM, you might want to try the old RAM again. And if the old RAM works fine, you might want to try another set of RAM. So there's the two sticks of RAM that we got out. Here's the new one. I'm going to pop this up. Okay. Then we got the two sticks. We're just going to take that out. All right, and we'll put this back in. You do have to put it back at an angle. Okay, should slide in like that. I like to wiggle it as I push it in to make sure it goes in all the way and then click it down. All right, same thing with the second stick. Get that in, go in at an angle like that. Push it, wiggle it, and then click it down. Um, also, I noticed they have this little jumper here. Oops, where am I? I'm not too sure what that is. SW50, so I'm not going to mess with it. There's also this one, E49. Yeah, I don't know what those are, so I'm not going to mess with it. I was looking at it because sometimes those jumpers are like a BIOS password reset or um, uh, BIOS password or BIOS reset jumper but uh it doesn't say on there so i'm not gonna mess with it because if you mess with it and you don't know what you're doing you can actually fry your motherboard so all right so let's go ahead and continue okay so we got this little cover we can put this back on hi venus okay so this one has two little feet here that go underneath this metal plate and then two that go on top so make sure you put it back right okay just like that, and then click that all down. All right, there we go. We can also try removing this big metal plate. Let me see if it doesn't use too many screws. I'll remove it so you can see underneath. Okay, again, using the PH2 uh, screwdriver. Let's go ahead and remove this screw. Okay, then we'll remove this screw. Oh, it looks like there's three. There's one here as well. I didn't see that one earlier. Oops. Okay, remove the three down there. Now that you got those three, oh, it looks like the hard drive box is also on top of it. So let's actually also remove the hard drive box. So if you're removing the hard drive box, it looks like one screw here. And then there's three back here. Sorry, I know it's not a good angle, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. There's three of them. Okay. So you got those three. Can this come off? Usually you need to like slide it or something. So let's see here. Am I missing a piece? It's not wanting to move. I see one screw here and one screw here. I don't think those are holding it, but let's go ahead and remove those anyways. Could be. You never know. All right. Nope. Still. Oh. I see. There's three screws down here I missed. Okay, I was wondering. Oh, geez, these screws are hard to remove as well. Okay. Remove all these screws. Last one. All right, the box is coming up, so we should be good. All right, so this metal plate looks like it just comes straight up. There we go. That's covering the hard drive. 
All right, so the hard drive is in this box, which has another screw back here. Let me turn this actually. Let's see if I can show that. Okay, so there's another screw here we got to remove for the hard drive. That's a lot of screws to get the hard drive out. Okay, then we got to get these cables out. These cables go to the optical disk drive. All right. If you want to remove that, there's two screws here. Um, sorry, there's two screws over here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to remove that, but we'll, we'll see. All right, so we can slide these cables out just like that. You have the connector for the SATA. <laughs> Not on my screws. Okay, so we got those. And then we're going to get these out. Okay, pull these up. They're kind of stuck with all the other cables there. It might help to just get this out first. So let's actually slide this. Okay, so the hard drive slides that way. Fina, stop wandering around here. Let me put her in the other room. Give me a second. All right. So again, you slide the hard drive that way. Okay. And then that way you have a little more room. We are going to have to pull these cables out. But uh, you slide that that way, and then you can lift this out. And that allows you to turn it this way and all the cables can get get out from there, all right? Then we have the SATA um, power and data cables that we need to remove. So these can be a little difficult to pull. Be careful not to pull too much on the cable. I kind of get my finger in there, but I'm doing most of the pulling from the bottom. The top is just to kind of have leverage. So we're gonna pull it just like this, wiggle, do the data one as well. Oh, it's all one connector, so there we go. There's the hard drive. Okay, we're gonna now put an SSD in here. So there's four screws holding the hard drive in place. We're gonna remove those four screws. Okay. Just like this. Okay, last one. All right, after you get those four screws out, you can actually dump the hard drive out. If it's stuck, we're gonna have to like shove it out because the rubber things. So I'm gonna go from here and push it, and there we go. All right, and there's the hard drive. So that's the old hard drive. It's a three and a half inch SATA hard drive. We're replacing it with a two and a half inch SATA SSD. Um, it's much smaller, much lighter. Um, doesn't really move, I mean, doesn't really have any issues with moving around. So you don't really need a proper way to mount this. You could technically just have it in the box and slot it in and then uh, connect the cable and it will hold really well. But if you really wanted to, you can put like some double stick tape or get a piece of tape, roll it up and then stick it down there. But uh, let me check it real quick here. So we're gonna just plug this in and I'll show you with a piece of tape how you would do it. But so basically you plug that in and then the hard drive or the SSD is in here. Okay, and it's basically not gonna go anywhere. Like the only way it can unplug itself is if you like drop it really hard somehow. And even then I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. You're more likely you're just gonna break your whole computer. So yeah, anyways, I think we're just gonna leave it like that instead of putting uh, some tape. Okay, then we gotta get these cables back in. So you can rotate it upwards just like before get all these cables in there just like that okay get these cables back in there and technically you don't even need the well actually I guess you do so they don't get in the way of the um, the screws down here but all right so we'll get all these cables up in there and then we'll take this caddy and just slide it back down oops make sure it goes into the rails and slide that into place there we go then we're going to get that one screw, put it back in. Okay, let's see about removing this cover. Um, it looks like there's a few more screws to remove here. So we got two screws up here. And I think that might be all we have to remove to get this cover off. Let's see. I don't know if there's any other hidden ones. So we got those two screws and yeah. Now you can remove this metal cover. You can see 
more inside. You can see the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery there. Um, this kind, you kind of like use something to push it inwards from this hole, and then you can flip it up. Um, it looks like the CPU is upgradable, but uh, be careful because if it runs too hot, you can't really upgrade the cooling system. I need to actually clean out the fan. Um, so actually, I'll do that in a bit. Let me see here. So we got all of that. There's actually two fans. There's one big one here and then a smaller fan there. So I'll actually clean out both. This fan is for the power supply that's right here. Okay, and the power supply looks relatively easy to remove as well. There's one screw here and here. I'll see about removing that once I clean it up. You got the power from the power supply going to the motherboard here. Got a bunch of other cables. Wireless card is down here. Um, yeah, and you got all these other little cables. So um, I'm not really going to go over it, but these two look like the speakers going in down here. Okay. And then you got all these other little cables that go to like the boards, the power button switches, and everything like that. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, let me clean the fans and I'll be back. <clears throat> all right, so you can see the fans all clean now. All right, let's go ahead and see about removing the power supply. It's not something that would usually break on this, I don't think, but uh, let's go ahead and just take a look and see. All right, so again, we have one screw here. And it looks like one screw here. If it's more than that, I'm probably not going to take it out, but we'll just see, okay? All right, so we got those two screws out, and... Oh, I think you have to take out, like, this fan shroud thing here. Are they hiding screws under this? How does this go? Oh, this is, like, caught here, so you need to pull this piece up. Sorry. So you need to pull this piece up, and then it looks like it kind of slides out that way. And there's one screw hidden under there as well. Okay, so I guess four screws you got to remove. And then now, yeah, now this lifts out. Um, the only thing with that is you'll have to undo, like, all the wiring under here and stuff. Which, yeah, that's a lot of stuff to take out. So I'm not going to do that for now. Um, again, as for the CD drive or optical disk drive, there's two screws here. You can actually replace this with a hard drive caddy so that you can have um, an extra hard drive instead of a CD drive in here. Um, if you do that, uh, you can replace it with a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. Here you can see we have the drive out and then you have this connector. You just got to pull it out just like that. And yeah, you'd want to measure the thickness. I think this is a 12.7 millimeter or something um, thickness. So you can upgrade this to a two and a half inch SATA hard drive adapter. And then that way you can add another hard drive in there. But let me go ahead and plug this back in. Get that in and put this down. Okay. Oh, they don't have a nice way to align this. So I don't know if it's going to be aligned quite right. That's not nice. <laughs> All right, anyways, let's get these screws back in. Like there's a lot of uh, forward and backwards play to this. So just try and line it up so it's flush to the side or the front, the side, I guess here. And then we'll tighten that back down. All right, I'm gonna put back the screws for the power supply. Sorry, I didn't actually take it out, but Hopefully that helped you at least get started if you need to take it out. It looks like there's two more screws here uh, next to the fan if you want to remove. Um, yeah, actually, might as well. I got this far. Let's see. Let's see what that does. It looks like it's lifting up a little bit. Oh, and there's one more screw back here. Can you even see? One screw back here. Okay, that's a lot of screws. And then, does this come off? So this whole piece comes up like this. There's all these cables wrapped all around under there. Um, yeah, I'm definitely not going to mess with that, but you can see now this whole piece comes up. So if you need to replace this panel, 
you can. Um, but this is just a plastic piece. And then this, uh, sorry. And then this power cable runs along to go to plug over here, I believe. So I think if you remove the um, power supply, you'll have this one cable. And then this cable is going to be sticking into that. So, yeah. All right, let's put this back together. Sorry, I didn't actually take it completely out. But, yeah, it is what it is. Oh, oh, they even punctured a hole in this little tag there. So, all right. Anyways, let's get that out. So they have that paper sticker thing there. They just poked a hole through it. So I just put the screw back in the same spot. Okay. And we'll get these other screws in. All right, SSD and RAM is upgraded. I wasn't planning on showing all this other stuff, but uh, I figured why not? Um, it didn't seem too risky or anything. All right, we're gonna slide this back underneath. That in, slide that under, there we go. And get that screw back in. Oops, there we go. All right, get the screw back over here. All right, and then get this screw down here. Okay, so there we go. We got all those screws in. Let's go ahead and start putting the other pieces back on, the metal plate and everything. Okay. All right, so we have this metal plate back. Let's rotate this back around so I don't get confused. Okay. We'll get this metal plate back on. Line up the little screw mounts so that way when you drop it in, it will go in correctly. Okay, then we got the two screws that were up here. We'll get those in first. Okay. There we go. Then we got the three screws down here. Um, for some reason, it's popping up. Well, I guess it popped up when we were taking it out, so that's probably some cables that stick up a little bit. Okay, we'll get these three screws in. That one. This one. Oops, why isn't it lining up right? Oh, I need to pull it down this way a little bit, so let's undo this screw a tiny bit. down good good this one oops all right now we got all those screws in let's get the hard drive caddy thing back on top okay so this one just drops back in place be careful with all the wiring Oops, let's also thread this back under. I forgot to do that. There we go. Okay, so get this back in. All right. Just like that. This should line up, and it feels like it should go down. What's going on here? This tab isn't wanting to go in where it's supposed to. So something's not right. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so we'll get those three in up here. This one. All right. Then we got the two black screws here. It's not looking like it's lining up right. I don't know what's going on. So I might have to move it around a little bit. 
So it's, I don't think this moves, right? Oh, there we go. Okay. This one. Okay, let's tighten these three back down. Then we got the three that were down here. We'll get those in. Okay, and we're almost done. All right, and then we're gonna just install Windows. Usually on Dell, you press F12 to boot from the USB boot device. And yeah, all right. Let's get all the rest together. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Um, if, if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. And if you can't do that, um, it helps a lot to watch a few of my other videos and then comment on those as well because the algorithm likes to see that. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, I am also starting a new channel uh, for specifically for my reviews and other stuff um, because some people were saying they wanted my repair videos to be separate and not be um, bombarded with notifications of review videos and things like that. So if you're interested in that content, um, please subscribe to that channel. It's called It's Been Reviewed and More. So, yeah, and someone was asking, what's the more part? The more is, like, if I'm traveling or doing other stuff that's not reviewing things, um, then pretty much that would be that content, all right? So, anyways, let's get this in. Come on, why isn't this? All right, there we go. We'll set that aside. Okay, now we got to get the bottom cover back on. So we'll just turn that. Put this up higher again. All right. So to get this back on, basically same thing in reverse. Get this all lined up. Okay. Um, because we removed it by pulling it up this way, you actually want to tilt this up. Um, let me see if I can show this. So you can actually see there's hooks here. So you have to tilt it up so the hooks get into place. Okay, so hook that in. All right, make sure all of the, the top ones get hooked in. It helps to kind of like hold it up like this and then pull it back so that way you can grip it up here. Okay, and make sure it's all hooked in. You can tell by the gap. All right, and then you just kind of squeeze down the sides here and work your way down. Good, all right. And there we go. Now we just got to get these four bottom screws back in. Okay. Oops, sorry. Sorry, it's awkward holding it at this position. Two. Okay, and then we got two more here. All right, got all those four screws back in, lay this back down, and then we got to get the stand back into place, okay? So to get the stand, you have this piece. Again, we have to go in at an angle, so lift it up. So lift it up, slide it in, drop this down, all right? And we just get the four screws back in. I like to loosely fit the screws first to make sure everything lines up properly. Okay, and then we'll tighten them all down. All right, last one here. All right, tighten this all up.
All right, so there's the four. Then we get this piece. This one just has a bunch of clips. So basically slide that under and then you can just clip it all down by pushing on it. All right, or should. Um, also, it helps to push that direction while you're pushing it down into the center so that the clips go in that direction. But that's pretty much it. Got it all reassembled. Again, hopefully this video helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.